Hi, I'm Rob Cousin. Welcome to my shop. I want to reintroduce my dovetail saw. We started producing these about seven years ago. It took a lot of heat in the beginning because we didn't use a wooden handle. It took a long time to get any kind of recognition. We've made and sold over 2,000. I'm actually not sure how many we're at right at the moment, but we actually manufacture them right here in our shop. And uh, after selling them for the last seven and a half years, we finally have got to a point where people realized if you want to cut dovetails and you want to do it well and you want to do it quickly, you need to pay much closer attention to the tools that you're using. Now, having said that, I started cutting dovetails with a $15 saw, but I was in my early 20s. I didn't have any arthritis. I could see great manual dexterity and lots of time. If you're 60 years old and you're just starting this right now, I would suggest that you take a real hard look at your tools because there are tools that can give you a big advantage. And uh, let me show you first the kind of recognition that we've managed to get. This is the first thing. We actually showed up on the cover of Woodcraft Magazine. That was in uh, 2010. Shortly after that, Chris Schwartz, editor at the time of Popular Woodworking Magazine, gave us a, a nice one-page review. And the best thing he said was, uh, the fine starter teeth work well. This saw may per may perhaps is perhaps the easiest starting western saw I've ever used, and it's fast. The extra weight turbocharges the tool. Then in 2012, in a magazine called Good Woodworking, David Savage did an extensive article on dovetail saws, and uh, there was eight of them that were reviewed, and of mine he said, this was the most popular saw tested, and the one that I would buy if I was looking for a new saw. I thought that was really good, very grateful for that. And just recently, as recent as the July 2015 issue of Fine Woodworking Magazine, there was a review done on tenon saws, there were three categories, and my tenon saw was selected as best overall in the RIP tenon saw. So we've, uh, we've got a bit of recognition. But what's all that mean? Well, let me tell you three things that you have to be able to, have to occur in order for you to get a good dovetail. It doesn't matter whether you're cutting them in pine, whether you're cutting them in walnut or maple. You have to, number one, be able to start that saw with precision. That means you've got to be able to put your saw on the line and make the cut. If it jumps around and you lose control, you're going to carve the rest of the joint. So I purposely put little wee tiny 22 teeth per inch on the first two inches of the saw. They have a, a negative 30 degree rake, which means there's almost no sawing resistance. So as you place the saw down on the wood, with just the weight of the saw, use those first few inches just to do, produce this, just enough to catch your thumbnail. Once you've marked your kerf, you can then go to the big teeth in the back, and that's where you'll get your speed. Just for those who may think pine was a bad example, let's put a piece of eastern maple in. Same principle applies. Create an anchor point with your index finger and thumb. Press your saw against it laterally. Use the little teeth to get that bit of a start, and then go to the big teeth in the back, and there's where you get your speed. Number two, you have to have a, produce a straight cut. What I mean by that, if you were to put a straight edge along the kerf, that cut must be laser straight. If it isn't, you'll never be able to match a pin to fit it. And, a, and straight and flat are, uh, are connected that way. Number three, when you produce the second half of the joint, or in, in my case, the pins, you have to have perfectly plumb cuts. If your pins get wider at the bottom, then when you put the joint together, something's gonna split. Or if your pins get narrower at the bottom, you're gonna end up with a gap. I made a saw that is twice the weight of most dovetail saws. It has a pistol grip handle so that it registers in your hand the same way every time you pick it up. And with a little bit of practice, you can actually feel the gravitational pull which means in, in very short order, you'll be able to make plumb cuts by feel alone. And making that plumb cut is the third factor. Now there's a lot more to it than that. But those three big things, and those three most important aspects, are all tool related. So if your tool, if your, if your saw is not doing the job, then the odds of you being able to catch up and be able to overcome the shortcomings in the tool just makes the job that much tougher. We started selling our saws in 2008, and since then, we've introduced a few more. This is our dovetail saw with the bone handle. 
we started making a crosscut saw, which is available in both handles as well. This is a what we call uh, ebony resin. This one we call bone resin. It's a composite handle. Works extremely well. I'll tell you about that in a second. This is our crosscut saw. has very fine 15 teeth per inch with just two thousandths of an inch set per side. Simply means that the teeth protrude out from the saw plate very little, which gives you a super smooth cut when you're passing through the wood. Next saw we came out with was our tenon saw, which gave you two and three eighths inch, two and three quarter inch depth of cut. 20 teeth per inch up here to start, 12 teeth, teeth per inch back here to get a nice fast cut. And we just recently introduced what's called our medium tenon saw. For those who find this just a bit big, this one has a two inch depth of cut, which will satisfy um, the demands of most mortise and tenon joinery involved in uh, house furniture. Now, just a little bit about the handle. I appreciate pretty handles, pretty wood. There's a, there's a, a screwdriver made out of coco bolo. And as good as it looks, it's very awkward, very difficult to get any amount of torque on that. This is my favorite screwdriver. It's got a rubber handle, large diameter. I can get all kinds of torque on that, and it does the job perfectly. Now, personal preference maybe, but I would rather put my dovetails on the mantle to be displayed as opposed to my saw. The saw, the handle in the saw is made out of a composite material. It's extremely heavy. That, that one weighs about two times what the same size piece of maple would weigh. It helps to balance the saw and it also gives you that extra weight so that gravity helps in training you how to make a plumb cut. Welcome to try them out. I, uh, my saws are sold in most of the Woodcraft stores across the United States. I do a fair number of wood shows. And if you're brave, just go ahead and order one. It's a great time to be buying anything in Canada with the dollar difference between the U.S. currency and the Canadian currency. It's at about a 25%, 30% discount. So real good time to be spending your money north of the border. Anyway, hope you enjoy this. Hope you get one of my saws soon, and good luck with your dovetails.